Here in Cedar Falls and across America, there's serious concern about our record high deficits. And we all understand that these deficits ultimately are unaffordable and, un and unacceptable. We know that in the years immediately ahead, we must take aggressive and painful and unpopular steps to bring this deficit under control, both by cutting unnecessary spending and by raising revenues. Certainly, we took an important first step by passing, I think, the new health reform law, which will reduce the deficit, according to the Congressional Budget Office, by $240 billion in the first decade and nearly a trillion dollars in the second decade. I also intend to push for a wide range of additional spending cuts. And I might just add, parenthetically, including eliminating some expensive Cold War era weapons systems. However, I will strenuously oppose attempts to balance the budget on the backs of our most vulnerable and powerless people in our society. And I will insist that we continue to make prudent investments in education, infrastructure, biomedical research, the things that will help us, as President Obama said, to win the future. If the amount available for Pell Grants were to be reduced by 20%, as some in the Congress have suggested, the net effect could be a doubling of the out-of-pocket expenses for a student receiving the maximum Pell Grant. I have proven myself through adversity and challenges in my past to get to this point in my life and will continue to press forward towards my goals and aspirations. If the Pell Grant program funding is cut dramatically coupled with the rising cost of tuition, I feel that my college educational goals will be driven further out of my financial grasp. During the 2009-10 academic year, 35 of 52 graduates from our master's program received a federal nurse traineeship. And of those 35, at least 25 are working in medically underserved areas or serving underserved populations. Now I understand the House, our House of Representatives, are threatening to cut these programs by, it's 8% cut. So if we cut all those things, the WEA programs by 8%, what's that mean here in Iowa on worker training, just on, on worker training in Iowa? Well, well Senator, what it means is that uh, workers won't get the training they need. They'll sit on unemployment benefits longer and longer until they exhaust them. And uh, You know how difficult it is to give continual extensions on unemployment uh, through Congress. And as a net result, uh, we'll end up putting people more on the welfare rolls. This study reports that at least 40,000 people, including 16,000 children and almost 4,000 seniors, receive food assistance each year just through the Northeast Iowa Food Bank and its agencies. In other words, in Iowa, one in eight individuals are experiencing some kind of food insecurity, meaning they lack consistent access to adequate amounts of nutritious food. And if kids don't have decent dental health, um, they can't eat. And if they can't eat, they can't grow. And if they can't grow, then there's all kinds of stuff that comes into that.